Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We continue our examination of the letter that Paul wrote to Titus. And we're in the third chapter, toward the end of it. And let me set the context again. We've covered the first five verses, I believe, so far. But we've actually stopped in the middle of a sentence. So you always do well to just to back up for a moment and say, okay, what's going on here? Remember what Paul said. He said, I remind to remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed, to malign no one, to be peaceable, to be gentle, and showing every consideration for all men. So that's what he was telling Titus to remind that group of believers to do and how they were to act and how they were to behave. We are to do likewise, okay? We need to be reminded of this. Well, why is that? Well, remember verse 3, he said this, For we also once were foolish ourselves. <laughs> In other words, there's hope for them, okay? There's hope for them. Uh, so don't sit there and say, well, you know, I'm righteous and I'm holy and God saved me. That's totally true, Okay. But then think there's no hope for anybody else. And boy, that is such a tendency. That is a strategy of the evil one to lie to the body about uh, the status of someone who's not saved yet. There is no one who is beyond the redeemable blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, So he says, for we also were once foolish ourselves. We were disobedient. We were deceived. We were enslaved to various lusts and pleasures. We were spending our life in malice and envy. We were hateful. And we were hating one another. Verse 4, But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, appeared, well, what appeared? The Lord Jesus Christ appeared. And so we see that the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ the first time is literally described as the kindness of God. And it's, uh, God is describing Himself, Father as Savior, Son as Savior. And so it's His love that has appeared to man. Verse 5 tells us what he did. He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Continues on the sentence in the verse 6. This is where we stopped last time. We saw that we, were, that we are regenerated. If you believe, if you've confessed and repented and called upon the name of the Lord and have believed, then you have been regenerated by the blood. You are being renewed by the Holy Spirit continually. Verse 6, the Holy Spirit whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that one little part of one little sentence right here, we see that we're renewed by the Holy Spirit, and it's the Holy Spirit that he poured out upon us. Well, who's that he? Well, when you're looking at pronouns, you just pay attention to what the context is, and usually it becomes self-explanatory. It does here. Whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Ah, so it says Jesus Christ, our Savior, he, Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit that he is the Father, Father God. And the Father God is the one that poured out richly, poured forth richly the Holy Spirit upon those who believe. And he did it through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Again, stop it in the middle of the sentence, just thinking about this for a moment. Remember how Jesus had said that was going to occur? He told his disciples, he said, hey, don't fret because I'm having to leave and go somewhere else. I'm not going to leave you abandoned. I'm not going to forsake you. As a matter of fact, there's going to be another of the same kind, okay, another of the same kind. And he's speaking of the Holy Spirit that will come and that will guide you and that will direct you and will encourage you and all these things that the Holy Spirit does. And Jesus says, the Father will grant unto me the Spirit whom I will give to you. So God comes and dwells within us as the Holy Spirit that was given by the Lord Jesus Christ to those who believe. He's poured it out richly, with abundance, without limitation. Verse 7, so that being justified by His grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So we're justified by grace. And, and these are terms that quite often the, the world doesn't know what they mean. It's no fault to the world. They've never been taught. You know, Most people in the church don't know what they mean. They're familiar with the terms of 
let's say, justification, sanctification, glorification, propitiation, all these various terms they've heard. But what do they really mean? Well, justified means this, justified by his grace. We have been declared to be uh, righteous. We have been declared to be pure. We have been declared to be clean because he has called us because we believe what he said. And because of that, he says, and I, I do, it's, it's a, a trite little thing that's been used for years and years, but it really does help you remember things. That justification is, uh, uh, the idea is just as if it had never occurred, just as if you had never sinned, okay? The Lord forgives us, and it's by his grace. When he does that, notice what he does. He makes us heirs, okay? H-E-I-R-S, heirs. Well, what's an heir? An heir is one that does what? Inherits, right? He's going to inherit something. We are heirs of what? Well, literally of all that he has for us. And it goes to several of the things in Scripture when you look at that. Uh, in Romans, we see that we've been grafted in. Uh, Romans 9, 10, 11 talks about that. How we've been grafted in uh, literally into those who believe and those who were called. Some interesting things related to that. <laughs> But for now, what he's saying is that we're heirs. We're going to inherit something. Well, what are we going to inherit? Well, he tells us we made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We are literally going to and are in the position and are inheritors of eternal life. And it is that that brings forth hope. Okay. It, you know, Scripture says if we only have hope in this world, then we're, you know, that's not going to work. Okay. We have a hope beyond this world. And that's what he's speaking of here. Now, look at the next verse, verse 8. This is a trustworthy statement. And concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God will be careful to engage in good deeds. These things are good and profitable for men. So the first part of the phrase is this is a trustworthy statement. Well, what's a trustworthy statement? trustworthy statement <laughs> is it what he just said or is it what he's about to say well both but primarily what he's just said he said these things that i'm telling you these are trustworthy things and then he says this and concern these things i want you to speak confidently okay i want you to speak confidently before the body of christ i want you to tell them the truth remember what paul told him to remind him of these things teach them these things exhort them in these things he said do this and speak confidently why? So that those who have believed God will be careful to engage in good deeds. In other words, it's not just good enough, shall we say, to believe God say, oh, yeah, I believe, I believe, I believe, but then have no good deed that is evidence of that. You really see that in James writing, right, in James' epistle. And a lot of times we're thinking of good deeds, you know, sharing a cup of cold water, doing this, doing that. That's fine. But, boy, the primary good deed that you start with is allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work that he desires to do in us personally, okay? The transformation in our own lives. And he says, so be careful to engage in these good deeds. And he tells us why. These things are good, and they are profitable for men, okay? When we think of profitable, we're thinking, all right, we're going to make a lot of money off of this. No, no, not that kind of profit. The Lexham actually translates it and says, these things are good and beneficial, for people. There's benefit that comes about because of this if we do it the way that God tells us to. If we know these trustworthy statements, if we speak these things confidently, if we live these things, we believe God, and then we're careful to engage in the good deeds that the Lord leads us in. Uh, like I said before, there's so much in these little phrases right here, these little verses, just a couple of verses here and there, which are absolutely transformative. We'll continue to examine this uh, as we go along. Again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you next time.